Hello, welcome to Access. I'm Rob. Joining us in this lovely space is Holly. Hello. This is nice, isn't it? This is lovely, isn't it? Get used to we it. Borrowed this from Inside PlayStation, which yeah. is a German team. Thank you, Inside PlayStation. You. This is much better than anything <laughs> we enjoy. Um, but there's going to be no Friday feature this week, Holly, as we're at Gamescom. We're very busy. Uh, yeah. So instead, we still want to put up a little video on Friday because it's fun. Yeah, um, we're going to talk about seven really, really cool games we're still looking forward to that are coming out this year, yeah, before like, Christmas. Before Christmas, stuff you can buy before Christmas yep. or you can ask for for Christmas gifts. There's been some cool stuff this year, but there's still some cool stuff to come. Yep. And I'm going to kick things off with Dishonored 2. Um, mm. I saw a big demo for that You today. actually saw it today, didn't you? It looks so good. Well, we saw it at QuakeCon. I kind of forgot how good Dishonored was until I saw this big presentation I for Dishonored 2. Oh man, it's so good. I'm looking forward to the, like, because they're obviously bringing them back out. Yeah. Now I'm excited for that because I have yet to have the experience of Dishonored, but well, Nathan loves it as well. It is such a brilliant, brilliant game. And Dishonored 2 looks amazing. You can play yes. as either Corvo, the hero from the first yep. one, or as Emily Caldwin. Um, you have some amazing new powers. Yes. There's like a power called Domino where you can link three enemies together and whatever happens to one happens to all of them. So, so what if you. I, I saw Emily kind of coming up this ledge and she linked three guys the first guy attacked her she parried and slit his throat and all of them their this way, just went oh, it's amazing and she's <laughs> also so got uh, a power called shadow walk where she can go all stealthy and she kind of prowls along like an animal mm. oh it's just really really cool exactly what you'd expect from dishonored multiple ways to you know complete every objective mm. Loads of really cool magical powers, very gory and violent. Actually, as well. I was really shocked by how gory it was. Yeah. Because I thought they might show you what we saw at QuakeCon. Yeah. So the big deal at QuakeCon is they do a little live stream, then they turn the live stream off, and then they show only the people that are there, special stuff. Now, we saw Corvo gameplay. Now, I assumed that's what you see at Gamescom. No, we saw but it Emily like gameplay. You, sound, you saw Emily, so. She I, was very killing. If you thought, like, the Emily stuff, Corvo stuff was brutal, wow. like absolutely just murder. And the cool thing is, you don't have to play it like that way no. if you don't want to. You can play completely non-lethally. You can sneak about. You can hide from everyone. You can non-lethally take down That's people. Boring. But yeah, That's a good bit of stabby, killy blood is. <laughs> That's what we need, isn't it? Keep you nice and relaxed yeah. in the real world. Anyway, what's up next, Holly? This is yours. Okay, no, no jokes. I want no comments about this in the comments, please. But my pick for one of the games I'm excited for that will be out before Christmas. It will. Is Final Fantasy 15. Yeah. No jokes, please. <laughs> uh, no, I played. I played about three and a half hours of it. Yeah. Uh, we we made a video. Yes, yeah, on the channel right uh, now. And there's like loads of information on that. I just I loved it. I mean, I absolutely loved it. I interviewed Tabata today as well. He seems happy. He seems a bit more <laughs> relaxed, I think. Um, now the pressure's off a bit. I, I just, I'm a massive fan. You are, you're a massive fan of fan as well. So you get yeah. that feeling of like, I just want to go and get lost again and I want to relive all those emotions that Final Fantasy games have yeah. given me over the years. And you know what? From what I played, I've played three hours from the start. I was getting that. And it's been... I was. It's been over six years since a main entry. Yeah. Single player. Yeah, because we both Final play 14. Fantasy. 14 is amazing. 14 is an incredible Final Fantasy yeah. game. And that single player Final Fantasy experience is for me, nothing else beats it. No. And no, 15 I, is going to be amazing. I, you know what? I just, I really, really can't wait. And when I played it, it wasn't delayed. So I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to get this soon. Isn't this month. exciting? Yeah. And now actually, it turns out I've played it, loved it. I have to wait even it's longer. It's been taken away. How lucky am I? Well, it's just going to make, it's like when you, you know, when it finally does arrive, it'll be yeah. all the sweeter for that extra weight. All oh, the nectar. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Rob, what, next what's up? next? Skyrim. Bah. Skyrim Special Edition, which is coming to PlayStation 4. Goodbye, Rob. I mean, and all 300 hours you're yeah, about to spend. I've just about got to the end of Blood and Wine in The Witcher 3, a game I've been playing solidly for over a year, over 320 oh, hours. God. What a game. Oh, everything about Blood and Wine. No Man's Sky I've been playing. I'm going to be playing that for ages. And then Skyrim's going to drop. That's it. Goodbye, Rob. And I can't wait to play again. It looks so beautiful. The problem is you're a dad this time round now as well. You weren't when yeah, Skyrim have, originally came out. Now I you've got to juggle everything. special designated times yeah. where my wife is at work and baby's asleep. And That's I actually it. get more gaming time now than, really? than I did before. Now you're like structured. 
Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to getting lost in Skyrim again. I know you prefer story-driven games like The Witcher, but I love that kind yeah. of make-your-own-story. There's still really cool stories have to find in, in Skyrim, but I just love the kind of randomness of it, the organicness of it, how you can just be wandering off one direction and just come across something, and it two hours later, you're knee-deep in an incredible twisty side quest oh it's so good so, you know i don't i don't get that same feeling i need yeah like you said i need things like the witcher mm. where i have a little bit more guidance a dragon age i need something like that oh, uh, i scrolls. almost get too lost i'm almost overwhelmed elder scrolls all the way for me i could i love getting lost in those games do i need another game that i'm gonna spend 300 hours on yeah Damn. <laughs> Damn. What's next, Holly? Okay, uh, oh, it's, it's more. It's more Final Fantasy. Yeah. World of Final Fantasy. Yes. Uh, so I saw this at E3, not this E3 the year before, mm -hmm. and it kind of got overshadowed by the announce of the Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah. Because like nothing else mattered after that. Um, Remember they announced it at E3, and it was like, oh, this looks nice, and then straight away they announced the VII remake. And that was it. Just like cancel <laughs> yeah. E3, it's over, everyone go yeah. home. Great. But World of Final Fantasy is basically. Uh, Pokemon Final Fantasy, uh, and we've played it. Like there's a game, there's like actual gameplay on my channel that yeah. we did. Uh, I love it, and the best part is, is it's PS4 and PS Vita, and because it's like a monster collector game, it's. I mean Vita. I can't wait to have that on Vita. It looks really beautiful, it's actually. Really I saw some pretty. more of it today that I'd not seen before, and it really brought home how this isn't just a cutesy little no. spin-off. This is a full-blown 50-hour RPG. Yeah with a really deep battle system, yep. loads of tactical depth, and yep. the grimoire, the world where it's set, looks absolutely gorgeous. And really loads does. of cameos from existing Final Fantasy characters, yep. existing locations, and the music is sort of a rearrangement of some of our favorite pieces, and the monsters are all recognizable. You know what? For me, it's a Final Fantasy fan. It's a Final it Fantasy fan's every, delight. It ticks every box, yep. a, everything. And, and while I'm waiting for, for 15 now, Play, world, to play world of Final Fantasy. So I'm, I, who's the real winner? <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. Everyone gets all these Everyone's great games. Everyone's a winner. Next up for me, <laughs> it's another RPG, but not. That's not like me and you, Rob, at all, is it? No, we're filling this whole video with RPGs. What's wrong with us? Uh, South Park, fractured but whole, or the fractured butthole. I love that you, <laughs> you try to it? put the accent on that. Fractured but whole. It's fractured but whole. Fractured but whole. Fractured butthole. Fractured butthole, is that what we're going with? Yeah, I mean, that's, the, that's what it is, Rob. The Stick of Truth was an amazing game. That game was, a, for an, even as an RPG, like strip away the a, South Park. Yeah. It was actually a good RPG. It was a good RPG. It was a brilliant representation of South Park. Yeah, and they, I they love managed to meet the world. Yeah. It's so authentic. You can tell that Trey Parker and Matt yeah. Stone have had their hands in making yeah. sure it's exactly like the show. It's so funny. It's so sharp and puerile and stupid and exactly what I love about the show. And to have a new South Park RPG on PS4, yep. it's going to look incredible. It's just, I can't wait. It's Hilarious. Just more of that just silly humour. Yeah. Sometimes, you know what? We do like a funny game, yeah. but you shouldn't have to sacrifice actual gameplay mechanics to make something a bit daft well, and a Well, the good thing silly. about South Park is that the humour kind of feeds into the gameplay yeah. mechanics and makes them good. Like yeah. some of the attacks you can do are really, really childish, yeah. but I can't help sniggering when I'm like farting on enemies and stuff. <laughs> it's amazing. It just, everyone turns into a big kid. Yeah. Uh, and South Park does that. I think we're seeing it at Gamescom. That's going to be cool. It, yeah, it's out It's out before Christmas. Yeah. It's kind of crept up, hasn't it, it's health part? Well, the last one sort of crept up as well, if you yeah. remember, and it was just sort of released, and I think they've done it again, but I, yeah, more JR, JR, it is. it was a JRPG, I suppose. It's a JRPG style. Yeah, they said they were influenced by JRPGs, yeah. and you could see it, but... <laughs> South um... Park, the JRPG. Next up, Holly. <laughs> All right, next up, so I'm going to stop talking about Final Fantasy. Uh, I'm going to talk about your other love. My other love is Destiny. Uh, and this is Destiny Rise of Iron. So this is like the next big expansion, yeah. uh, and it's out on the 20th of September. I've been out of Destiny for quite a while now. I've not been in it since the Taken King. Is this going to make me come back to it, do you think? Yes. Like, so I have been out of it for a while as well. Uh, because, you know, I, we just got to that point, and as a team, we like sort of stopped playing. And then we started seeing the Rise of Iron stuff, and like you can see everybody at work like, Destiny at lunch? <laughs> yeah. And you're like... <laughs> Yeah, go on. Do, it do, started again. Do a quick strike, and then you're like, <laughs> yeah. you get, you. I picked it back up, and I was like, oh damn, this feels. I remember how good this feels. I think Destiny, as a shooter, just the mechanic yeah, wise, absolutely. feel wise, is one of the nicest. There's I've nothing like shooting something in Destiny. I, honestly, and I can just have all my. We're all on chat, and we're just having a laugh, and we're just 
patrolling or we're doing a strike and I have such a good time when I play Destiny and I can't wait for more Destiny. Uh, and we actually played it here at Gamescom. Me and Nathan did a live stream of one of the new strikes and it was so good. Nice. And it was, yeah, there was like a giant like ogre that had his eye ripped out and his eye was now in the gun of the priest. And Classic. like you had to Classic avoid the, the ogre was immune. You couldn't shoot the ogre. So to avoid the ogre while going after the, oh, Titan life. Like some of the best multiplayer experiences I've ever had have been with Destiny. You know what? I, you know, that's right. I have had the most fun online playing Destiny. I think it feels fantastic. I just want more. I just want to get my Titan out there and I just want bubbles for days. <laughs> Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm genuinely excited for Rise of Iron. Yeah, I mean, it does look amazing. I like Destiny. Our last ashamed. entry on our list is super exciting. Now, this again, I, I can never explain to you. If you haven't played these games, they're incredible. Yeah. Bioshock, the Bioshock collection, which is the original Bioshock yep. and Bioshock Infinite. Yep. Coming to PS4. And Bio to Bioshock 2. And Bioshock 2 yes, as well. Yes, in the middle. And the DLCs. So Minerva's Den so is some of the best DLC out if there. If you missed out on any of the Bioshock, now it's all coming to PS4. Yeah. I mean, these games were beautiful anyway. Oh, this, yeah. In terms of atmosphere, Rapture from the original Bioshock, there's not a lot that's beaten that. No. Oh, in you know terms what? of world building and no. how it feels to just exist in that place and the disconcerting eeriness of it. But just because it, it was all a bit so, so, so sad because you just had these little, you had this idea of how incredible this world they must have built was before what happened on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And it was always, that's in the back of my head, like, what must this have been like? Uh, and honestly, the original Bioshock, probably one of my all time favorite games. Bioshock 2, massively underrated. The DLC was incredible. And then Bioshock Infinite, that first hour in Infinite Bioshock Infinite. was amazing. You know when you come up into the yeah. sky and say, like, hallelujah. <laughs> and you're like, Oh my. Everything was perfect and in was, that game. And it was bright and light where the original Bioshock's been dark oh, I and cannot wait to see what it looks like on PS4. I just, I just want to have the experience again, especially the original Bioshock. Yeah. Because even, even if you haven't played it, it is one of the cleverest games with one of the simplest reasons oh, for so it. it's so inventive as well, isn't it? Just that, that yeah. little bit. And I'm not going to say it because it, it's so powerful. If you've not played it yet and you, this is going to be the first experience you've had with Bioshock, Going blind. You're in for a treat. Yeah, you really are, and I, I'm so... Superb games. <laughs> so it turns out there's lots to look forward to before Christmas. There are, you know, and that is good to hear, because yeah. there's always stuff to be excited about. There's always stuff on the horizon. And when you come here, you see loads of games for the future. And just to know that these are just seven, that wasn't a hard list to write. We literally just picked some of our favourites. Yeah. There were loads you could have put on that list. <laughs> we put a lot of RPGs on there, didn't we? we it's Rob's Friday feature. If we want to put RPGs on here, we're I'll going to put RPGs, what I want. We're going to put RPGs I'll on here. I'll do what I want in my Friday feature. You're not my real mum. <laughs> and anyway. Dave's not here to play your mum either. No, he's not. Shh, don't let them know it's Dave. <laughs> Did he bring the 90 to Gamescom? I'd like no. to think it's in his... He didn't, his... no. There's a Brian Cox wig in the camera bag. There is. There is. Genuinely, <laughs> there is. We're the camera bag. We're like professionals. <laughs> and then in this, this is a sort of acrylic black wigged mess. As though something's crawling out I of the camera Brian bag. brought Brian to Gamescom with me. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. There are seven games we're really looking forward to that are coming out before Christmas. Let us know in the comments if there are any games we've missed that you're particularly looking forward to. And don't forget to subscribe because we have got loads more coming up.